啦啦。Putting it all together, that's the topic I want to throw out there today. Let me pause this track. This is this is really a cool channel. I will link it in the video description when I finish up today, but um, a new channel that has a bunch of really solid backing tracks. So that's pretty neat. Um, it's good to get some fresh backing tracks in the mix there. This, this topic is ridiculous because like how could I – how can I sit here and tell you how to put it all together in a video? Well, really, I'm going to throw out some tips today, and hopefully it'll help kind of fill in the blanks for some of you as to how I managed to piece this thing together musically, maybe how some other people also will get some ideas going in the in the, ba in the uh, chat box today. You know, I'm convinced there's a million ways to do this to get to the same place, musically speaking. Some people follow the theory approach. Other people are following just ear training and some people mix it up. But as far as the pieces and, and how they're collected and put together, I mean, that's a, that's a big topic. So when I started playing at the beginning of this video, you know, I was thinking to myself, just how can I play the, to this track just like as simply as possible and keep things very basic so that somebody can see that you can make great music by focusing on just little little bite-sized pieces at first. So here's what I got. I mean, I just came up with this idea about 15 minutes before starting <laughs> the clip here today. And I thought this is a good kind of thing to talk about. So it's going to be a little loose, but Hey, that's sometimes the best things come out when you're, um, when you keep it loose. So feel free to throw your ideas in the chat box. If you've got other things you want to throw into the mix. Um, Here's something that is not as related to all of these things. So I'll start with this. There's nothing wrong with teaching harmonica at any level. And I think the important thing is to recognize your ability level first, where you're at and teaching um, within the means of your ability. And just, again, recognizing where your strengths are and sharing those things. I think that's a really good way. I think that's one of the reasons I developed as a player over the last specifically – uh, I guess it's been 13 or 14 years now. So um, of putting YouTube videos on and, and as far as teaching really that, that focused. So t if you can teach somebody anything, you're learning in the process because you're forced to sort of evaluate your own knowledge from many different angles to help communicate that information. Start teaching. Um, order of operations. I thought I would just talk about technique to start off today. Um, you know, one way to get there is just to build really good technique. The technique sort of leads you to musical expression often. It's the vehicle for which we are expressing. So, hey, guys, checking in there. Thanks for showing up and being here and hanging out this lovely afternoon. Um, yes, I have tried the PT Gazelle method. It's cool. That's the half valved harmonica. It's a sidle harmonica. It's not my bag, but it's a really cool harmonica and in the right hands, it sounds great. So technique, when you're thinking about your technique, I would say take careful stock and think about order of operations. This is where it really does matter to think order. 
if if you skip something that's essential to your foundation, you are bound to be screwed later on and have challenges that are seemingly impossible to overcome. And the way to get around that is to back up and get your foundation going. Okay. So here's what I think is the most important. Get your breathing and your rhythm going together. These chordal things that you can do, these simple. Whoops. And I've got an A harmonica. Just an in, in, out, out on the one, two, three, draw chord. Something very basic that allows you to feel what your breath feels like when you're playing, you're working on that diaphragmatic breathing. You're trying to get your tone to come out. Think about it this way. If you develop a tone early on, you can, you're can you developing a way to identify with what you're playing musically. When you don't have an association for what your tone is and what it sounds like, you, you end up feeling um, very disconnected from your instrument. And it's almost like you're not even playing it. It's like it's like the sound's coming out, but the feeling's not there. So really get connected to creating a tone. And tone is obviously your sound coming out of the instrument. So, yeah, you know what? That's a really good point. You get I get so nervous when I play. Any tips? Yeah, I do have a tip. Um, that was the hardest thing to figure out early on was reg with regards to my breathing. I felt like I could actually say something musically, but when I get up to play, I was so nervous that, the breathing was the first to go. And then I couldn't really do what I do. And I think that's a common thing that happens. So the first thing is settle your breath. When that happens on stage, you have to simplify your statements. And which goes along with what I wanted to say today. Putting it all together means starting with these little bite-sized musical ideas and just saying something simple. So let's say you get up there and you get really nervous and you got this little music going right here. Let's put this up. You could just go. Just the key is simple, right? You would be better off holding a note or holding a warble or just playing a note and waiting and trying to hit the beat. Two, three, four, something very basic that you can connect to musically. And in the process of doing that, your your breathing will start to settle. Um, so get in touch with your breathing early on in your playing and get those chords going. And also the rhythm thing is, is big. So if you want to work on timing specifically, you can't just play chugs and trains. You could, but you need a reference point. If you're having issues with timing or you're unsure, the way to figure this out is to uh, record yourself and maybe use a metronome at that point if it's feeling like it's an issue. The metronome is a cool device. You can put it on um, and keep this simple sort of like tick-tock going and get the timer going on the – you know, the phones have these simple like metro timers, the one I've got on here. Makes that funny noise when you move it around. There's 76 beats per minute. You could take a scale. Or you could take um, double time each note. You could do triplets. You know, you could do a million, million little things with a metronome and you record yourself in the process trying to figure out, hey, am I on track or am I off? Go slower if you need to, to work on timing. Um, so got tone and breathing. Single notes would be one of the most important things as a technique you need to get down. Like numero uno after, after learning how to sort of just breathe from your diaphragm and relax. Listen, if you don't have clean single notes, you have, you have to live in that zone. That means playing first position, no bending, just trying to play clean single notes for a while. This will help you tremendously because if you don't clean those notes up, you have one way of saying something and it's, and it's this looser sort of the dirty note approach. And it's hard to communicate real emotion when you can't mix in some clarity. Then dirty it up. You've got to be able to get these single notes immaculate. Once you can get one single note perfectly, to me, it feels it, 
it feels like, hey, I should be able to do that anywhere on the harmonica. So if you are having issues with this, I got a video that I'm going to put up soon that I recorded the other day all about becoming the best pucker player you could be if you're going to use pucker, whether it's exclusively or mixing it. And so it's teaching you all about how to seal and get the best tone when you are puckering if you're going to use that. There's some cool stuff going on in that video. Check that video out. Once you've got your puckering and your single notes clean, in theory, with the tips that I give you in that video, you should be able to move around anywhere on the harmonica. The, the space between the hole, you know, there's, they're all the same distance. The, the tines, these, these pieces that separate the holes, they're, it's all the same. It's not like some holes are bigger than others. So you should be able to move around and get your single notes coming out by learning songs. Learn where these, where these notes are. If you're not going to memorize, um, you know, the, what the notes are on a particular harmonica, at least learn where the sounds are. Yeah. Like get to know the, all the repeating notes. This is an exercise I have called pattern recognition. It's a lesson on my website. Pattern recognition is a way for you to recognize patterns, but first it starts with understanding where these notes are located. It uh, doesn't matter what key harmonica you have. The notes will change, but the sounds will be reproduced as same notes on a particular key. Once you find them, they're the same spot on any key. And so on. You start doing this with just blow and draw notes. You've got to learn where these are early on. I didn't do it. I did it, I guess, a little bit through learning songs. But when you get this down, it makes so much. It makes it so much easier to discover melodies and sounds on the harmonica intuitively. So ear train these repeating notes. Um, same with the scale work. Take basic scales and just get really good at using the scales um, to work on single notes and or vice versa. You know. Uh, work on the scale, obviously you're doing single notes, but you can have the focus switch back and forth. Is it the technique of single notes or is it the pattern I'm working on? When it's the pattern or the scale, you give yourself a little bit of leeway if the notes aren't always coming out clear because you're working on getting the pattern down. But if it's the technique, you use the scale to get the single notes perfectly and you back up when you mess up and you just constantly try to refine that method. Working on tongue technique. So uh, that comes after single notes, in my opinion, but there's a million things you can learn um, to do on the harmonica with your tongue. And if you're not using your tongue to some degree and you love blues harmonica, you're not really expressing uh, the, the true potential of blues harmonica. As I've stated in other videos, you've got too much in the language of blues harmonica that involves the tongue. You'd ha you have to use the tongue to some degree. All these slaps. Flutters. Um, octaves and splits. Um, you know, what am I forgetting, everybody? Warbles, like side to side. Things like that. Let's see what's in the chat box here. Triplets, double stops, tongue blocking, puckering, chugging all in for phrases. Yeah, all in one phrase, and it's been getting my technical embouchure changes quick and smooth. I mean, yeah, it's a great approach. Having to switch embouchures back and forth is a really good way to get good, um, not only at the individual embouchures, but at expressing your music, becoming more musical with your phrasing. Because in those phrases, Think about it this way. An embouchure change is always a textural change as far as the sound and musically speaking. We want to be able to have a very well-rounded and diverse um, palette when it comes to the things that we could say, you know, musically. You've got to have the texture. The texture is what, what attracts and pulls people in. Like if I just played this for you, or would you rather hear... got a little more life to it um, with double stops and the octaves and all that in there. So good stuff. Yeah. Breathing is everything, man. Cause you think about it, your breathing is your, um, 
is the source for you getting in tune with the vibration of the reeds. And the vibration is what is, is helping you feel and connect to the music more intimately. So in counterintuitive for many folks is that they need to learn how to breathe softer to get in tune with those vibrations, to be have more subtlety in their music so that they can play more emotionally. That's my opinion, at least. Side Alan Hone or good harps, Kevin. I've been trying to get my bends right, but my throat gets really strained. Maybe do less of the focus on the throat and maybe more focus on the tongue position. Regardless of puckering or tongue blocking, you have an opportunity uh, to examine the the tension, I would say, actually, that the tongue creates, the positioning in this as the bend. It's not always tension, but in, in many cases with bending, we're creating tension points in the tongue to position an upward and often backwards position and draw bends. So if you took the time to focus on the tongue, maybe a little bit more, strengthening its ability to, to push upward into the hard and soft palate, depending on where you're trying to bend. Higher up in the harmonica, it's more forward in the tongue. And higher keys especially are further up in the tongue or the palate, the hard palate. And these lower keys or lower notes are often soft palate. So we're lifting way back. Think about the itch when you got an itch on the top of your throat in the back where the soft palate is. You've got to push your tongue up. Get the tongue working up, not just back. So for Bill, you know, you say you can play anything as long as it's slow enough. That's cool. I think to get past that and to get to other, to feel comfortable playing other tempos, work uh, progressively. So you use backing tracks to your advantage to, to figure out where's your max comfort zone and maybe live there for a while, but then reaching for the next tempo that you can go up might be a good idea to get you, you know, in other words, you can only... Musically, you can only articulate or say as much as you're able to articulate. You have to you have to be, have command over the technique before you can express it at, at a quicker speed. So there's nothing wrong. It's good that you can do something well at that speed and then get get to the next one. Hey, what's up, Dwayne? Oh man, more Sonny Boy Williamson on a G harmonica in second position. So using like a D track, yeah, maybe I can put some of that up or find something before this post is done today. Um, and by the way, ear training is great. Um, I see somebody wrote, I've been ear training a ton. Nate, that's a good idea. Ear training is a big part of this game. I'm going to get back to my list in a minute, in a minute here. Um, so Manji wants to just snap into the bends. Owners glide. Yeah. Everyone, you know, each harmonic is different and it has, as I discussed in yesterday's post, we all have different preferences. You got to find what's good for you. No, you don't have to play 12 bar blues all the time. In fact, you should, you should really strive to find music or play with musicians who are adept outside of the blues. Blues is, is the source of so much music. So it's a great starting point, but even in blues, we've got, one chord grooves, eight bar blues, um, and beyond 12 bar uh, in the lightning Hopkins realm where he, who knows what he's going to play 14, 15 bars or 18 bars, things that force you to listen and, and push you outside of your comfort zone. So here's a tip, figure out, record yourself often and figure out what you're doing well and stop doing so much of that. <laughs> Spend more time on the things that are difficult. I had a problem going back to doing the things that I loved because those were the things I enjoyed and I got really good at those. So I kept repeating those things and I never got past certain barriers because I wasn't searching for the, the things that I really was challenged on or the things that I had been avoiding Well, bending is all about tongue position, Larry. Yeah, you're right, man. I think it's a, a gr in great part, it's a combination of, of a balance between the breathing, tongue position, and the accommodations the body and head make for the tongue. Like jaw positioning can change. Like if we examine on a G harmonica, I don't need to do that on a C. 
I can do all tongue. So yeah, there's a and balancing and married the marriage of the breath control with that tongue position. Then we start to get a strong tongue. Building that tongue is a is a muscle, right? And that muscle memory that you're trying to develop has to be a, tiny movements at first. Most beginners are moving their tongue around so fast they can't determine what they're really doing. Go go slowly. Why thanks, Mr. Rivera. I appreciate that. He says you're very good at teaching and explaining. Wow, I'll follow that tip. The itch makes sense or if you got peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. Something right there. If you can do that sound. Here's bending with no harmonica. You got to, like a vacuum, get that tongue up there. Yeah, you want to be a master, you have to master the basics. And people don't realize what that really means. All right, check this out. Um, build a strong foundation. That was the first big tip. Teach. Be musical right away. You know, how, how do you become musical right away if you're new to music in general or especially new on the harmonica? And again, if you're new to music, then, then it's compounded. You take one thing and you master it. it. For me, it was Oh Susanna. I've said this before, but I'll tell you what, it was the best thing I ever did. I lived with that song for months before trying to do anything else. And I didn't realize I was getting good at single notes in the process. I was just having a blast playing Oh Susanna because I had never really been musical. I never had any musical experiences. So get good at one thing. And then get good at one more thing, like really good, like to where you're blowing yourself away. You're surprised at how good you're able to do something. You've got to su surprise yourself. Yeah. Um, working on the three hole bends. Show me how the how little movement you need. I wish I could show you, Bill. I don't think I can show you the inside of what's really going on. <laughs> This is an A harmonica, and the movements are like this. Flat for the draw. I mean, the, the positioning, for, like if, if this were my tongue, and obviously this is not to scale, right? But it would be, you know, the movement only needs to go from here to like here. I don't need to shove the tongue way back on it, not on this A harmonica to get those notes to come out. The Wizard, Black Sabbath, that's a good first one. The shirts, um, mainly they come from Honer because I work with them, so I get hooked up. They often use these shirts for promotional events, like the one coming up in Philadelphia area, uh, November 5th and 6th at George's Music that I talked about. Um, so they print them for promotional events. They used to have a storefront. They sold them at the Honer website. Um, so be musical, you guys. And and speaking of being musical, in the world of improvisation, which is a totally different concept and approach to playing outside of learning a song, it occurred to me that, you know, I have, look, I, I do a lot of teaching online. And the biggest thing I get all the time is how do you put this stuff together? I keep acquiring technique and they do, they have the good skill set built up. I'm just not musical. I'm not musical. They're not. I think the problem is in the world of improvisation and here we go. This is the, this is the crux of what I wanted to talk about as far as how it relates to improvisation to become more musical and, and put it all together. You've got to manage a much smaller amount of musical space and be very rhythmic with it. You've got to be in tune with the groove. When you do these two things, you have your chances of being successful musically increase dramatically versus the guy that's moving left to right a lot on this. Think about it. You're managing more as you search for riffs. I'm searching for nuance in two or three notes where I can play with the syncopation, the rhythmic accents and changing up the, the internal groove of what I'm doing to the groove. So like this. Three draw.
so for me, I, I guess what I what I'm the point I'm making is the less I move around, the easier it is for me to be more musical. The l- not that I can't be musical moving around fast, but like in in the beginning stages, especially, it's got to be limit your spaces and find out what you can do just <laughs> with chords and just a couple of notes. You, that feels good, you know. I'm not even worried about it at that point. Never worry about how your music is impacting someone else. Worry about how it's impacting you. Because if it feels good to you, there's a very high chance that it's working for everybody out there listening. And when it feels off to you, it's going to sound and feel off to the audience too. So you've got to find a way um, to do what you can do well. So that means even a beginner. I've heard beginners get up and be super musical by leaving a lot of space. There's a second tip. Less, use less of the harmonica, but then also leave a lot of space. You know, these are very simple ideas, but they can be super musical. All right. What else do I got? Do less, but do it well. We kind of alluded to that. Learn all songs and melodies often. So keep adding to your rep- repertoire. Just just constantly add to what you know. You know, um, and and I'll include, which is coming up right next on the list here, position work. If you learn something really well in one position, it may lay out really well in another position and it would it would help you if you learned another position. So another scale that you can play that song in. Um, learn melodies. If you love a song that has no harmonica and no uh, distinct uh, instrumental stuff going on, but you love the song and you love the words, learn the melody to the, learn the words on the harmonica. You know, learn the melody line, learn how to play that by ear, start slowly, just search for the first note then just the first two. Don't try to do a whole phrase at once, just a tiny bit. Yeah, this is an A harmonica. Sorry about that. Um, what else did I jot down? I did say record yourself often. And I wrote timing, timing, timing. If, you, if, you, if you're missing out on, any, on certain things, you'll never put it together. So if your breathing is off, it'll never come together. If your timing's off, it'll never come together. If you're not passionate about your playing, it'll never come together. Passion draws out more technique and draws more out of you. It forces you to to really play to your highest level, your your highest ability level that you can. Nice, Dwayne. So, Dwayne, you're a great player, man. I've been listening to you play in the clips that you put up. I encourage you guys to check out um, Dwayne's channel. You know, what Dwayne brings to the table that a lot of players maybe are not doing yet is that besides developing good foundation, is that everything's played with intention. Every note that you play, are you playing with passion? That's what's making it work so well. So keep doing that. The key is this. You've got a slow release passion. Passion can be the interrupter like nerves. Okay. Think about it this way. Nerves is from fear, anxiety, and that throws your breathing off. Passion and excitement can also throw your breathing off. So the way I describe it is I'm constantly trying to evolve how passionate I can feel and, and that energy that builds inside of me when I'm playing but I've got to learn how to slow release all that energy. That's my approach at least. And when I do that, I don't trip over my own, myself, like tripping on your shoelaces, you know? Um, you go too fast to trip. You've got, to, you've got to slow down and manage the energy that you have. So if you're the one of those people that gets fired up and you're like, shit, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to play, but I know it's not going to come out the way that I'm feeling it. Say less, relax, take one note. Those are the tips I had today. What other things do you guys have? Are you tongue blocking? I'm tongue blocking a lot. It's like it's mixed, half tongue blocking and half puckering. I got some sales going on. If you dig this video, 
give me the thumbs up, subscribe today. And I've got some things that I put in the video description. Like if you've never taken a Skype lesson with me, first timers only, you can get 10% off by using the coupon code Skype10 at Harmonica123. And I put a lesson called Putting It All Together on sale. It's a simple little $8 video download where I talk about putting it all together. Uh, with my good buddy, Bob Pellegrino. We made that years back. You blocking, I am not a you blocker. So I can tell you that m my thoughts on it are, are limited as far as my, it's, there is none from my personal experience. I can't speak, but I've worked with over the years, a handful of you blockers that the vast majority of them had issues um, with bending typically. Not Now look, uh, Norton Buffalo apparently was, uh, one of the only famous U blockers that I've heard of. And there's a guy that took it all the way. So I know it can be done, but the majority of people that I work with that U block convert and start to focus on some puckering and tongue blocking. U blocking for those that don't know is when you are going below the hole almost with your tongue to sort of guide, use your tongue as a guide to find the note. And they make a little U to do it. You know, that's, it's actually a good idea to do some more lessons on the dynamics topic. I had other things that I thought of after I posted it. So maybe a follow-up. I don't know how a series, but maybe a follow-up would be cool. Um, and I think you're going to find more often that I'm going to start doing these bursts of videos. And then you may not see me for a while because I go on the road or do stuff. But when I can, I'll try to like put more content out there. Play with the soul. Yeah, for sure. Um, here's the thing in front of me. I, I think I just mentioned this quickly. Um, I, I, I said earlier, teaching is a good way to get better. I taught a seminar at the SPA convention, the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of the Harmonica. This convention that they hold once a year. I, I'm there pretty much every year. It's in St. Louis this coming year, and it takes place in mid-August. Last year, I taught a thing on teaching harmonica. And coincidentally, Mr. Joe Felisco also taught a seminar on teaching harmonica. And I have his, his notes from that seminar in front of me. And they're, they're cool. We, we had very different approaches about talking about it. And I learned from his little list. I attended his class. It was really cool. Um, I'm just reading through it. Easiest thing to play is chords. There are two main chords. This is from Joe. There are two main chords, inhale and exhale, it, which is to say, use the hell out of them. <laughs> I'm saying that part. Um, simple songs done well are better than complicated songs played poorly. Definitely. Here's a great one, you guys. Here's the best takeaway from his list. Uh, no, I don't teach children harmonica. I've done it before in the past years ago. Groups, yes, like blues in the schools. I've done presentations for kids. Um, I don't do one-on-one. -on -one. I think that takes a very special individual. I love kids. I really can connect with them, but teaching, that's a whole nother thing. I think I drew on myself, you guys. Little pen mark. Um, so here's the best tip that Joe's got on his list. Listen to this. This is worth the wait here. He says, the hardest thing about learning the bluesy styles may actually be developing control and skills on the inhale breath. Let's, let's just end today talking about this last thing. This is a big one, though. People trying to improvise in second position. Uh, yeah, this is a crossover today. The people that are trying to improvise in second position are failing in one big way. They're playing a lot of draw blow patterns. And those notes you're blowing on, while they can be good passing note choices, the way that you're using them when you do that is just not working musically. It's you're playing out of tune. So to develop this connection to the inhale breath, not only in second position, but for other positions too, like third position, will help you tremendously at becoming more musical. I mean, in the most simple way I can put it is in second position, when you breathe in, you're playing in, in tune. You're playing in the key.
essentially. Especially here. So you've got to learn how to extend the inhale breath. And what Joe's point is, is that most people, that's not natural. We have an exchange of in and out when we breathe naturally. So you've got to develop long inhale control. Oh, in St. Louis, that's where the event is being held. I didn't live there, but that's um, that spa convention I was talking about is held in, in St. Louis this coming August. So you should you should consider going. Just check out spah.org. Hey, Connor, what's up, dude? Check out spah.org for kind of information on the upcoming conventions and memberships and all that. Yeah. Build templates. Here's a final thought. These things just pop into my brain, but build templates. Templates like what I mean by a template is in the world of improvisation, learn how to say many simple things to one idea. And those become templates that you can go back to and sort of sort of build off of. Um Like there's many ways we could play this track, for example. Like this. I'll, I'll play it one way and then I'll play it another way. But simple outlines that you can then build off of. Here's a totally different kind of simple template. couple templates that come out besides just and this little using the three draw and the two draw to outline these chords as I just throw in a simple riff which is essentially three draw four blow three draw but I'm texturizing that by putting in a three four draw with a little bend on the three octave on the one four so I, the idea is simple, though. And you can simplify the technique to make it fit for you. And then you build another template where, you know, you start on the six, maybe, and you just go. <laughs> just little lines, little riffs in there. And what happens is you get enough of these ideas going around, and before you know it, you're soloing without thinking. And you have these things to come back to to, to build off of. Cool. You want to hear a riff on a B flat harmonica? Well, okay, man. All right, yeah, just check out spa.org. I'll be there in August um, for the convention mid-August. Uh, that's when I'll be there next. So check that out. Uh, thoughts on Pat Bergenson's first position style. Ooh, Pat Bergenson's great. I missed that comment. He's a wonderful player and a great guitarist as well. Um, I don't – any thoughts on it? Not really. I mean, I just know that he's a great player, and I've, I've met him and listened to him play in person and – seen his videos his music is great pat's a very a prolific jazz player really good if we're talking about the same pat bergeson what's up from madrid 
Hello, everybody, and thanks for hanging out with me today on this video. Check out the deals in the video description, too. Check out Spa. Connor knows it's loads of fun. He's been going there for many years as well. Connor, congrats on your, your, um, what is it exactly, Connor? You won a championship of some sorts for the a harmonica thing. So check out Connor as well, you guys. There's some cool people that, that often join in on these broadcasts that I recognize some names of some great players out there. Connor's one of them. Um, Dwayne is definitely one of them. Dwayne, I consider you a powerhouse. I just want you to know that, man. You, you bring all of it to the table every time you play. That's what I love about your playing, man. There's no guesswork as to whether you're feeling it. It's just right there. So, Connor, I guess you're – I don't know if you're still there, but if you are, let us know what that was. All right, it doesn't matter. We still love you, man. Oh, Florida, the Florida Harmonica Championships. Win or lose, lots of fun. Yeah, congrats, man. That's cool. I'm not big on contests and uh, musical contests, but that's cool. Uh, you know, that's a good recognition, and you deserve it because you're a really good player. So I'm making an exception here. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. It's nice and snowy. I'm going to take a walk out in the snow today. It's a gorgeous day in Denver. Why are fourth and fifth positions? Uh, a random last second comment. Rarely discussed in harp circles because they're less commonly used. You'll find them used more often in, in jazz. Often, more often than like blues. And they don't lend themselves. Here's one reason why you don't hear it uh, talked about as much because to effectively, often to effectively use those, the, those positions you'll want either a half valve to harmonica or be an overblow player to take advantage of all of the notes to make the scale really fully lay out. That said, you can use like fourth and fifth, fifth position with no overblowing. And I have got a couple of tunes that I do with no overblowing. So you can do it. So, and those songs are like um, Black Orpheus and Sugar. I've mentioned these before, but a lot of the way people are using them, they're overblowing. So I think that's why they're less common just a little more limited maybe as far as compared to first, second, and third that fit beautifully with blues. St. Louis, it'll be at a hotel in St. Louis. Just go to spa.org. It's got everything you need. Everything you need will be there. Especially like as it gets closer. Right on Diego. Thanks a lot. Um, it's funny what you can learn through osmosis. I'm convinced that, um, most of the things that I figured out over the years were literally just because I was surrounded by better players pretty much all the time. Everyone was better than me. I was, I was the guy trying to figure it out. At least that's how I felt in my mind. So I was always trying to grab ideas and just listening and being around players that are really good players. Um, I was around Michael Rubin and JP Allen Gary Primich, Walter T. Higgs, and Guy Forsythe in Austin, Texas. And those guys really shaped my musical ear and the sound that I, that I became attracted to, this raw bluesy sound. Not, not all of them played that style, but all of them knew how to do that. And I was exposed to that sound early on. So good stuff here. Um <laughs> I think that's what I got for today. And I appreciate you guys joining in. I will see you soon in the next few days. Check out the deals in the video description. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe so I can find you again here sooner than later. And hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you are alerted when I go live next. Oh, thanks, Diego. Yeah, it was a fun project to work on. My pleasure. I'll see you guys again soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go practice. <laughs>